Hello, I'm David R. Jones of the Community Service Society. One third of the eligible voters in New York City choose not to vote. And there are currently 1.7 million New Yorkers who are eligible to vote but have not registered. Our topic today on the Urban Agenda is voter registration. Joining me now is Professor Ronald Haydock, who teaches political science at CUNY's Manhattan Community College, and for three years served as the coordinator of the New York City Voter Assistance Commission. Ron, welcome to the Urban Agenda. Thank you. Pleasure to be here. Now, I've heard of the Parking Violations Bureau. I've heard of the Board of Education. I, I don't think many of us have heard of the Voter Assistance Commission. Geez, I wonder why. Yeah. What is this all about? When, when was it created? Uh, the Voter Assistance Commission came into being by a vote of the city uh, of the voters of the city of New York in 1988. It was created um, when the charter was changed, um, and was created at the time um, when the Campaign Finance Board, which is its sister agency, was also created. Um, it was created essentially out of a mobilization of voting rights, voter registration organizations, civic groups, to try to increase our democratic participation. The mission of the Voter Assistance Commission is to facilitate um, voter registration, voter education, voter mobilization of all New Yorkers, especially those who are uh, among the non-voting population, right. people who are least likely to be registered and to vote. And uh, so it has, um, what, 13, 14 year history. But right. uh, it's really been, unfortunately, um, not able to live up to the promise. And, and why is that? I mean, it, this seemed pretty straightforward. It got established. I see campaign finance, uh, you know, is a big operation. I think it has, you know, 40, 40 people working for it. What happened to this, uh, this uh, agency? It's uh, uh, unfortunately not been able to uh, keep itself, um, it's a been, been a political football, more than the campaign finance board. Campaign finance board is, was able to, um, have itself established outside of the political process um, more easily, partly because of the way it was structured in the city charter, but um, they were also very successful at having it institutionalized. Um, they have a multi-million dollar budget. You mentioned a 40 right. person staff. Um, they're widely respected and um, greatly needed, um, as we saw in the last elections, right. to ensure that there's a level playing field. VAC, on the other hand, um, started at a quarter of about a uh, $750,000 budget, mm. not small change. Right. Um, had great hopes um, and a good start in terms of some of what they originally started to do, but then became a political football. Well, between let's describe that. What, what do you mean a political football? What happened? Different there? mayors. Uh, the way the city chart, the, the way the commission is organized, it's a, the commission is a 16 member b body. Uh, so the 16 commissioners to the Voter Assistance Commission. Um, the mayor appoints three. Uh, several others are members by their status of being uh, ex officio members, heads of agencies like uh, the Office of Management and Budget, mm -hmm. Corporation Council, the first deputy mayor, the head of the Board of Elections. And then the city council appoints six members. Mm. Um, all of these members are supposed to be representative of um, uh, groups who are underrepresented in terms of registration and voting, um, very diverse, broad representation in terms of the demographics of right. the city as well as the business community. Um, and so VAC began with this, you know, uh, mission which is actually very unique in terms of the uh, right. rest of the country. No, no, not many other cities have an agency so like that. So what happened to the funding right away in your three-year tenure? Uh, well, um, during the Koch administration, it went from 750000 to about 500000 Right. a cut. Um, unfortunately, Mayor Dinkins um, inherited uh, the worst uh, recession since the Depression right. and cut the agency even further. Um, and what happened under the Giuliani years? Uh, Giuliani cut it even further. Um, so and now, of course, it's been we have the Bloomberg the administration, I think, which actually occasions this show. What have they done to it? 
Uh, I think they've cut the budget down to $40,000. $40,000 from three quarters of a million. Correct. Uh, why should this be of concern to, to New Yorkers uh, at all? I mean, uh, if people don't vote, who so cares? What? I well, mean, they obviously don't, don't see the importance of it, and why should we? Uh, I think the importance is becoming increasingly apparent to those constituencies, especially that are most effective. But just think of um, a little, uh, history is a great teacher, I right. always find. Um, New York City used to provide 50% plus of all the votes cast in New York State. Mm -hmm. So New York City was a critical uh, block of voters to determine who would be the governor, to determine who would be in the state legislature, and at the federal level. New York City's voting power has um, eroded over time. We've, we've gone from providing 50% of the votes statewide and at the federal level to 30% today. Um, part of that is because people move to the suburbs, but part of it is because th the mission of VAC has not been fulfilled. Um, when Motor Voter came into being, the National and, and Voter Registration right, Act. Right, you have to explain. <laughs> Motor Voter is um, an agency, as a uh, federal law that requires uh, government agencies like the Motor Vehicles Bureau or when you go to apply for food stamps or other social services to at the same time offer people the opportunity to register to vote. And that should have solved all this, I assume. Well, that was the idea behind Motor Voter. Right. And it works. Um, very effectively in most states and for the rest of the state of New York, but because New York City has uh, much fewer people who have driver's licenses, 51% compared to 91% in the rest of the state, um, VAC is critical in order to reach all the potential voters um, in the city. Now, over these years, you, you talk about the sharp drop in voting percentage. Actually, in the latest census, it showed that New York State overall, upstate, was losing, hemorrhaging population, and New York was gaining millions yes. of people. What, what is this that imbalance? That hasn't translated into votes. It has. has. Voter registration has lagged in New York City compared to the rest of the state and participation as well. And so as the new immigrant waves come in and people uh, immigrate from other parts of the country into New York City, they're not necessarily registering and voting. Correct. And this is exactly where VAC can play a huge role in ensuring that everybody has the opportunity to register to vote and that um, communi community-based mobilization efforts and educational efforts are conducted. And VAC can do all of these things. It has authority to do all of those now, things. Now, what do you think in terms of uh, what this could have meant politically, for instance? We've had some critical issues, obviously, between how New York City fares versus the rest of the state, mm -hmm. how monies are allocated. Uh, for instance, what issue could have been affected if we were we had a larger uh, percentage of the voting strength of the state of New York? Well, right now we're facing um, the hugest uh, budget deficit since the fiscal crisis of the 70s. Um, this is partly due to the fact that the city and state have, have cut funding um, in the past and made some, some questionable financial decisions. Um, for example, we lost the commuter tax. Yeah. If New York City's voters um, were uh, better represented in the state legislature and in the state house, we would probably would not have lost the community. I tax. guess another example we're having uh, obviously a case that community services is involved in trying to equalize school funding, and that's, that's a classic example. It's classic. If but there was better housing, education, transportation, immigration policy—you name it across the board. Um, to the extent that policies are set at the state level especially and at the city at the federal level New York City is losing political clout we, we don't have as many representatives speaking for us and this is partly because we don't have the voting power and the despite the growth in our population numbers right so we have eight million people but um, our okay. proportion of the vote is much l less Let's than Let's describe it could be. the Voter Assistance Commission as you would envision it after your three years as coordinator fully staffed fully operational, what would it be doing? Oh, it could do a ton of things. Um, what a great vision. Um, what, a, what an incredible... That's uh, what you expect to get. Well, <laughs> that's what it should have been, and what, right. it, what it could be. And, and thankfully, um, my understanding is that there's a move afoot in the city council to try to actually help realize the commission's mission. And I, and I know that later in the show that you'll have a segment um, where that gets discussed. But essentially, um, VAC could ensure 
that the 25 to 30 city agencies under its authority actually do provide the opportunity to register to, to vote to all the clients that come into contact with. So at a housing office, um, uh, the Department of Employment, the Department of Personnel, uh, the Department of um, Youth Services, um, you name it. Wherever a, a city resident comes into contact with a city agency, um, at that time, um, when they're applying for services, when they're filling out forms, they could be offered a voter registration form. That's essentially what VAC could do to integrate registration into the process of uh, the regular services that the well, agency Well, don't provides. most city agencies uh, claim that they're doing this already? I, I thought that was the deal. Well, Why do they need an oversight? I don't know if they claim it or not, but they're certainly not doing it. And the numbers um, are clear to show that that's not happening. For instance, what, what are they doing? Do you have any sense of what's going on here in terms um, of what a city agency, let's say, um, let's pick one, Department of Employment or, or one of the agencies, that, that are dealing with people who are asking for support or benefits? Well, unfortunately, um, largely because of the legacy of the Giuliani administration and a court case, um, we don't have very much hard data on actually what the agencies are doing. That is... But I thought the Voter Assistance Commission was supposed to be collecting data. Correct. Um, they were originally... Um, the agencies were originally required to provide data to the Voter Assistance Commission but that's really gone by the wayside, um, largely because VAC hasn't had a staff, hasn't had a coordinator, hasn't um, been able to follow up and monitor what agencies are doing. Plus, the um, agencies have been sort of let off the hook by um, these previous administrations. And You're being very nice about it. You think this was a conscious effort to make sure that certain people didn't get registered? Uh, Conspiracy theories are, are <laughs> often um, very effective, but it certainly was in the interest, uh, wasn't in the interest, I should say, was not in the interest of the Giuliani administration to see VAC fulfill its mission um, because VAC's mission is aimed um, to promote the registration and participation of those that are underrepresented, who are predominantly low-income people, people of color, not Giuliani voters. Um, so it was not a surprise to many uh, observers that uh, the commission um, essentially was uh, defunded, gutted, and that agency registration stopped. Well, we're going to see if we can do something about that. I'm hopeful that that's going to happen. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Uh, we'll be right back to continue the Urban Agenda. A very special program that is taking place on campuses all throughout the City University of New York. I appreciate very much the opportunity to lend the resources of the Central Labor Council. Campus by campus, individualized voter registration day. Not just on the campuses, but the communities that those campuses are located in. We recognize that this could be a huge success. All of us have to become involved in the political process. You have to participate and vote for officials that make decisions about all of our lives. We build building a new and we're going forward into the future watching democracy at work making sure democracy works for all of us welcome back to the urban agenda we're talking about voter reg registration in new york city i'm joined by my css colleague juan cartagena our general counsel, and a leading voting rights expert. How are you doing, David? How are you doing? Good. Let's talk about uh, the VAC bill, the Voter Assistance mm -hmm. Commission. It, it was defunded by Mayor Bloomberg down to the level of 40,000. Uh, we've been working with members of the council. What is the status of what the council is attempting to do? The council has only recently uh, introduced a resolution that it will pursue at least uh, funding to the tune of $1 million for VAC which would actually take it just above its peak funding period, I believe under the Dinkins administration, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a resolution that was just introduced by um, Councilman Charles Barron, and we're hoping that we support it, and we're hoping that it will get some leverage in the city council in its negotiations with the mayor. Well, you've done a lot of uh, legal work trying to get city agencies to uh, get involved in registration as pursuant mm -hmm. to the motor voter registration. Legislation. What what is happening? Are are these city agencies uh, actively going after trying to register people? See, the city agencies fell out from under the federal laws requirements essentially because they were mayoral agencies. Um, 
the state agencies are the ones who lift the burden here. So they're, they're not required under they're the They're not required order. per se, right, exactly. Right. What we've done at CSS, as you know very well, David, and what we've done and many advocates have done is try to push various administrations to do something about this. VAC is key to this. But the thing about VAC, and think about VAC's purpose, it's, it's essentially to, to instill hope and in, in, in revival amongst the, rep, the, the city's unrepresented sector, right? One would think that the city council, if it was going to create a commission like it did for VAC, just similar to the IBO Commission, Independent Budget Office. Right. They both have similar functions. The funding, the problem with VAC has always been its funding. Any mayor can come in and say, well, we need to cut here, cut there. And therefore, it, it completely, you know, takes away its real power. Now, do we have some unique problems in New York? I mean, there's been a real demographic shift in New York, the largest waves of immigration from all over the world, but Central Americans, Africans, you name it. Does New York City, from your, your view, because you've done so mm -hmm. much work across the nation, have a unique problem in trying to get people registered? Sure. I mean, to the extent that we have a fairly high, a large proportion of people who don't have driver's licenses in New York City, mm -hmm. that's due to an excellent public uh, transportation system, right? Mm -hmm. um, many of us grow up in this metropolitan area and didn't have a license for a long time, myself included. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, the, the motor vehicle agency, the core of that federal law, the motor voter bill, doesn't reach our populations as much as it does in other parts of the country. Now, actually, at motor vehicles, it, it's not, you don't even get a form. You're, it's, right. it's some it's kind of checkoff. It's integrated into the regular application. So therefore, what you're doing is checking off that you want to, that you are able and you're willing and able to register. The, f the craziest thing that happened in Congress when the motor voter bill was passed is that for, mo for people who apply for vo driver's licenses, they assume good faith. And they assume that those of us who want to register through that mechanism have exercised and made an intelligent choice. When it comes to welfare recipients, however, Congress said no. We want all these checks and balances. We want to make sure that the welfare recipient signs off affirmatively, that they have not been pressured into doing so, that they're not being steered into one party or the other. Think about how it plays out. The poor people who are presumed, the stereotype is they will always register for the Democratic Party. And that's a big stereotype, and New York City has borne it out. Large, peop large numbers of our people who don't get involved in the political process, when they finally do, registers independent. Independent. They don't want to pick a party. Exactly. As a matter of fact. This, this, you know, harks back to some older time in America, of course, where poll taxes and various literacy requirements for the American South uh, were imposed under the notion that you couldn't be sure that people were really educated right. enough to, right. to make informed decisions. Actually, literacy requirements right here in New York State, David. We had a literacy requirement for voting as recently as the 1960s. And there was an English-only literacy requirement as well, which created all kind of complications for Puerto Well, well talking about the language requirement, mm -hmm. how, in how many languages are these voter registration forms going to be in? Uh, and essentially, the law permits, federal law that is, uh, requires that a system provide assistance in the language of a language minority group whenever that group reaches either 5% of the jurisdiction's population or 10,000 people, whichever comes first. Now, do you think the city of New York has been uh, following that particular? Generally domestic? speaking, except it for has. Asian groups. So they have a big, hard time with Asian groups. Uh, some horror stories, including mis mistranslating even the most basic labels from Democrat to Republican. I mean, we're talking major problems at the Board of elect Elections for Asian groups. However, you should know, we all should know in New York City, that amongst the language minority groups that are more than likely going to benefit from this new census that we've just documented, the right. growing diversity of New York City, or possibly Koreans. So we may have Koreans in, in pockets new, of New York City oh, sure. as another group. And what that means for the ballot, the layout of the ballot, and the ability of the Board of Elections <laughs> to do this right, it's, uh, you know, you can imagine. Well, this goes to the need for new voting machines to handle all this, which obviously right. is a, a, a new issue. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what you envision as a voting rights expert, knowing this stuff, if, if the VAC we could have, the Voter Assistance Commission was really operational, was really, you know, hitting on all four or six the cylinders, cylinders <laughs> depending on which age you are, uh, what would it look like? What would it be doing in terms of trying to assist voters uh, to I, make sure they registered and vote? Sure. I think it would have an aggressive program at all the mayoral agencies, um, and it would have teeth into it. It actually it wouldn't be a passive program. It would be a program in which a mayoral agency, a person who walks into a mayoral agency, is affirmatively asked, are you registered to vote? And if not, would you like to register to vote from today from your present address? A wonderful, simple question. And it will be integrated into all the service delivery options in all of our mayoral agencies. It would also have, VAC would also study the kind of like barriers that may impede voter turnout. It's one thing, as you all know, we all know, 
Legislation is one thing. Turnout on Election Day is quite another. And I think what VAC has failed to do consistently is to look at those issues, to find out what is it that would motivate people? What is it that, what is it about the election structure itself? Is it the hours of operation? Mm -hmm. Is it, the, is it the, the large number of machine breakdowns, and particularly in poor communities? Is it the inability of the Board of Elections to monitor itself? Those kind of things. It would have also its annual hearing to, quote, the state of elections in New York City would be a much bigger affair, I think, and we'd probably pay more attention to it in the media. We'd actually study how people are doing, how the Board of Elections is doing, how every other sector of the government is doing for voting. Now, we've uh, talked a little bit about the huge numbers of people who are unregistered but eligible, the 1.7 million. Uh, who are these individuals? If we started to take a look, in your judgment, uh, what would they represent? What groups would, would be overrepresented in this one in 1.7 million? The general tourism throughout the country plays itself out in New York. The more, the more education you have and the higher income, the more likely you are to register to vote and to turn out and vote on Election Day. And that's still true in New York City, given the wide disparities between the people who are very well off in New York City and the people who are just existing just barely above the federal poverty lines. Um, those, that poverty line is a good indicator of who that 1.7 million are. Also, among the 1.7 million who are not registered but are eligible to be registered, um, and we find this all the time, there's a certain core of our population that's just very difficult to reach, will not participate no matter how hard we try. Um, and, but that's a very small number. The large number of people are just people who have not convin convinced that voting is actually helpful to them, that voting will actually help the security, the cop walking down the street to make them feel secure in their own neighborhoods, right. and also helps on the larger issues, you know, how do we deal with issues of war, federal spend, spending and everything. Well, the education issue that you were, you know, leading CSS's efforts mm -hmm. with in terms of equity and education and is clearly one that has a heavy political overtone to it. Definitely in New York, yes. Yeah. Now, at, at certain points, would, would VAC be able, for instance, with the Board, uh, board of Education, uh, there's always a question. I had it long time ago when I used to be a youth service commissioner. We had worked out a tentative de de deal with the Board of Education that as a graduate uh, comes to get the mm -hmm. diploma, you couldn't get your diploma until you had your registration card to present. That's true. Uh, that would be a wonderful program to yes. be instilled in the, the, the question right. of, you know, is this uh, part of being, you know, coming of age almost? A ceremony where right. high school graduation also equates with coming away with a voter registration card. See, what an effective VAC can do in that example is, first of all, to be, to be a resource on assistance and technical assistance to the Board of Education. But more importantly, it can highlight that very problem that you raise. It would be wonderful if VAC, if it surveyed all of its mayoral agencies and said, here's a big gap. At the Board of Education, we don't have a consistent program to register newly, new 18-year-olds. What can we do about it? And the focus would then be on the Board of Education to do something. Now, you have a view of the rest of the nation. Are there other localities and states that are doing this better than we are? Oh, sure. But for, for, for larger issues, for impediments that we have in New York that don't exist right. necessarily across the country, some states, you know, have what's called election day registration. What is that? Well, election day registration means if you're qualified to vote and you've yet to register to vote, you can show up on election day, show identification, and register to vote on the spot and vote. Which is one of the interesting things that, that many voters really don't get, or potential voters, don't get excited until the eve of the election when they hear something that really ticks them off. Right. And by that time, they're not eligible. And part of that is as well as a function of our campaigns. A lot of campaigns don't spend all that extra money on advertising, particularly TV advertising, until a week or two before that. And if you're not registered by that time, you won't be you're able to finish. participate. No matter how that message grabs you, you're unable to participate in the process. Registration is the biggest barrier to election participation, not the other way around. Now, there, there are certain groups that, no matter what we do, are, are prevented from voting uh, because of background issues. Uh, right. Obviously, non-citizens can't mm -hmm. vote. Except in, except in, select, so, in, except in, in New York City school board elections. Right. Right. But there are other, gr other groups that have this problem. Yes, um, and that's a big issue that, that's being debated now across the country, David. Um, essentially, felon disenfranchisement laws operate in many states, and New York has one as well. Um, some states, like Florida, actually permanently debar a person who's ever been convicted of a felony offense from ever voting in the state of Florida. Even after 20 years and they rehabilitated. Nothing nothing so nothing. Bush's daughter, when she finally mm -hmm. gets through. There you go. Okay. There you go. And, that, and that's being challenged now in the courts. Right. In New York, um, we've all been exploring the possibility of challenging New York's law, including CSS and other organizations like the NAACP. And, and what does New York's law specifically provide? Well, New York's law basically does the following. Among the universe of people who can get convicted, you have people who get suspended sentences and fines, people who are incarcerated, and of course, parolees. Parolees are only people who have been incarcerated. 
If you got suspended sentence and a felony, you can still vote. But if you've been incarcerated, you cannot vote while you're in incarceration and during your parole. Now, this is no secret, David, and you know this very well. Right. Blacks and Latinos in the state of New York disproportionately get sentenced as is incarceration and jail time, much more than whites, for the same offense and the same backgrounds. Right. And that's the problem. The criminal justice system is killing our communities generally, and when it comes to rehabilitating a person who finally gets out, it makes it even harder for that person to participate. Well, thank you very much for uh, sure. participating with us. I'd like to uh, thank uh, Juan and uh, Professor Haydock for joining us today. It's been an important discussion. There is no more important act in a democracy than voting. It is an avenue to integrating new citizens into American political life and the traditional way of exercising political power in this country. We strongly endorse the refunding of the Voter Assistance Commission. I'm David R. Jones of the Community Service Society. Thank you for watching The Urban Agenda. To comment on the Urban Agenda or for more information on CSS, contact Community Service Society of New York, 105 East 22nd Street, New York, New York, 10010, area code 212-254-8900.